Hi, this is Sean Parker with Fill in the Blank, the show that talks about what's happening in greater central Ohio with local leaders in the community, local people who are here to make a difference, and to keep people informed as to what's happening. Today, we have a very special guest with us, a gentleman by the name of Ben James. Ben is running for Ohio House of Representatives. He's a regular guy who you will find out isn't so regular. He's got a lot of special things about him, special messages, a unique perspective on what's wrong and what's right with what we're doing in central Ohio right now. So first and foremost, I want to say welcome, Ben, to Fill in the Blank podcast. And we always start off with, tell us about Ben James. Who are you? Well, thank you, Sean. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it so much. Well, my name, like I said, like you said, my name is Ben James. I grew up here in Columbus, Ohio. Went to a local high school, Northland High School here. and Love Northland. Go Vikings. Go Vikings. Yes, sir. After school, I got married very young. Just kind of told this the other day. I got married very young, had a kid very young, got divorced very young. Uh Uh-oh. So, (laughs) yeah. Love happens and life happens, right? Exactly. (laughs) So uh, that happened. And then uh, after after my divorce, I kind of... You know, just kind of wandered for a second and didn't really know where I wanted to go in in life and stuff like that. So, but my faith is very, very important to me. My relationship with that that I have with Christ is very important to me. So, I just got back involved in the church and different things like that, and and started. I'm a, I'm a musician. I play the drums. I played the drums since I was five years old. Oh wow! Yeah, and so I played in my church bands forever. You know, kind of kind of got back in the church, and then I met my current wife in 2006, and we dated for a few years, and we got married in 2010, and we had a son in 2013. Nice. He was eight, and we, and he's our, we already, I had a son previously. She had two daughters, so then we had a son together. We've been you know, doing different business adventures together as a couple, and and we are just, you know, loving our lives that we have right now. And then it hit me, Sean. The the whole political spectrum kind of <laughs> hit me. And if you'd have told me a year ago that I'd be sitting here talking about this, I would have thought you were crazy. But you know, I started studying some things out in the political arena and started seeing some things that I thought were not correct, not right. And so I began to study some things out and started to look at different perspectives of things and found out that, you know, the things that I was seeing were not right. Okay. And, you know, it made me study even harder and started going back in history and looking at some things as far as you know, Democrat and Republican, mm-hmm. and why did why did certain people vote a certain way? Let, let me stop you on that and, and just go to that point a little bit. Was it stuff that you actually saw or stuff that you just sensed was wrong? And can you tell us a little bit about maybe just a couple of things that you saw that you knew for whatever that reason was that you're going to tell us about wasn't right? Well, I guess, I, I guess the, the, what you said was that sense of things that were wrong. Not things that I probably actually saw, Mm -hmm. but things that I kind of sensed just were not right. I guess for me, I I always wondered, and I say this to people, I don't say black and white. You're not a white person. I'm not a black person. We're just different shades. Mm -hmm. I'm dark shade. You're light shade. That's it. I started to question why are dark, darker shade people voting a certain way? Uh Why do they vote this certain way and have for the last... 40, 45, 50 years. Okay. That was my question. And so I started studying these things and trying to find out what happened. So I had to go all the way back. When I went all the way back and studied, and I, and I started to think about it, and I found out that a certain party was the party of the Ku Klux Klan, I wondered why the people that were dark shade voted for that party. Mm-hmm. And so I had to go back and see where the switch happened. Okay. And it took me to 1964, 65. All right. When President Johnson was in office. Okay. And, you know, the Affordable Care Act came and all these different things happened, you know, and he said a certain line that I can't say, but he said a certain thing that made me go, wait a second, that's not right. 
Okay. And so when I found out that he said that, that's where I saw the switch happen where, you know, people were being incentivized for not having fathers in the home. Mm -hmm. People were being incentivized for having babies okay. and these different types of things. And, and so that's where I begin to go, wait a second. So I read the whole Democratic platform mm -hmm. and I read the whole Republican platform. Okay. And when I did that, I found out that the Republican platform lined up pretty much with what I believed in my life. And this is the platform from 1960. No, this is recent. This is re this okay. Is, this, this is the current. This yeah, is the this current, current platform. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, this is current. So we're and jumping. So, we're jumping to current yeah, times. Yeah, we're jumping. And so then, so then that's what made me go. Well, wait. A, why? Why have we been voting this way for so long? Uh huh. And so that's what made me start to just see some things different. And then, and then, and then 2016 happened when President Trump came on the scene. And what I liked particularly about him was that he didn't need anyone's money. He spoke his mind and he just, he said what he believed in. And that's kind of how that's, that's my personality is that I'm going to say what I believed. Now, whether it hurts your feelings or not, I, that's, that's a you problem. Okay. And so, and that's what I kind of felt. And so, and so I was able to get behind that. And then when he got in office, he did what he said he was going to do. Now, now, if you step out and say that, and I'm just going to warn you, if we, this, go, this goes out into our distribution, you're going to have a lot of people call you a lot of not nice names, people from the inner city community who are going to label you as not nice things if you agree with, with those plank platform issues of Donald Trump. Why is that? And is that fair? And do you want that? I, I don't want it. But I believe it's already happened. Okay. So it's, I mean, I have, I've been called all types of names already. Okay. I, mean, I, I, I don't want to use those names because I don't right. like those names. Me They're either. It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's demoralizing, it's demeaning, it's dehumanizing. And, but it's all they got left, I think, to, to destroy people. Exactly. It seems like. So. Exactly. And so, I mean, I mean and, and all it is is names. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And I, yep. and I think I'm above that. To not even bring myself down to even, you know, entertain that type of stuff. Okay. You know, because, like, I know what my belief is, and it's like, if, that, if, that's, if that's the worst you can say about me, then that's the worst you can say about me. Where'd you get your beliefs? My foundation in Christ that I have. Okay. And I, I read the Bible every day. Okay. Um, and so <laughs> I, hear, I hear this joke made. I get up, I read the Bible every day, and I read the New York Times so I know what both sides are doing. <laughs> so that's, that, that's kind of, you know, you know, that's kind of what I, what I, you know, that's kind of what I do. But my beliefs come, I, I mean, I have a f strong foundation. My parents, they're still married to this day. And my parents are, you know, they, 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 they taught me what they knew, mm -hmm. you know. They didn't teach me everything, but they taught me what they knew. That's where my foundation comes from. But then I, once I started to grow up and I started to see, you know, the world from my perspective, I had to just broaden my horizons and started learning more, reading more, and doing these different things. Were your parents right? Or were your parents, do, do you see your parents as, in the world they lived in and they grew up in, on the wrong track, possibly, in terms of what they taught you and what they believe today? And, and I know you can't really, it's hard to talk about your parents, but but I think that we have to also have a sense of where we came from to understand where we're headed. Exactly. I believe they, they taught me from what they knew because that's what the world that they saw. Okay. You know, my father's from the South. My mom's from Chicago. So my dad, he grew up, you know, he knew about the picking cotton and, you know, working long hours as a kid and, you know, only be able to go into school for a certain amount of time. Then he had to go back out to the cotton fields. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. He, so he only, he, they only went to school in the winter months. Okay. And so I, I can't exactly remember the time frame from about like October to February or something like that. Mm -hmm. But once it started getting hot, they had to go back out to the cotton fields. Yeah. So they taught, he taught me from that perspective. So he wanted to have something better for me and our family. So that's what they taught us. You okay. know, they taught us from their perspective of what they knew. Mm -hmm. But growing up in the 80s and in the 90s, 
that was completely a different perspective from what I knew. Yeah. So once I began to see that, I understood why they did what they did, but it was completely different from what I was doing. Okay, interesting. So you're running for House of Representatives for the state of Ohio. And tell us about why you're doing it. I mean, you did a little bit. And what specifically you bring to the conversation for what you can achieve to make the world better? Because nobody does this to make the world worse. They do it to make it better as the vision they have. So tell us about that vision a little bit. My vision, Sean, is to basically dispel this whole narrative. There is a narrative that's being put out that because I'm a certain shade of color, I have to think a certain way. Okay. And because you're a certain shade of color, you have to think, think a certain way. And that those thinking, those ways can never cross, and we need to keep those separate. Hmm. I, I, that's, that's what I'm seeing. And so... I mean, that, that, that in itself is racist, right? Exactly. That's separate but equal. Exactly. Okay, that, we got rid of that a long time ago. Gone. Yeah. And so my whole thing is to, because, I, because I, I'm this shade of color, I have to go this certain route to get to where I want to go. That's not necessarily true. And a lot of it is I'm trying to tell my boys that, yeah, we have athletics. I played football. My, my oldest son played basketball. My little son loves basketball. And most of the time, the way out is athletics. Mm -hmm. What I want my boys to know is that there is another way out through your mind, through education, through books, through reading, through these different avenues. It's, you know, and that you don't have to be a certain stature or a certain live in a certain neighborhood to be able to go to a certain college, you know, and to be able to, you know, attend a certain school, you know, that if you want to go to a school in, in another neighborhood or a, a better school, that you should have that choice to be able to go to that school to provide a better education for you to get to where you want to be in life. So you see education as one of the great American equalizers. and. Right now, I mean, the big argument out there is schools don't perform at the level they need to, that kids are coming out with less education than they did in many respects, classical education. And we're going to have a podcast coming up this week or next week as well with, uh, with, with one of the leaders in education that's going to talk about their views on this uh, in terms of starting up some classical education curriculums. What can be done to provide access to good education to people right away? Because I think many people agree, I think most people agree, that our schools are not doing the job. It doesn't mean our teachers aren't doing the job. I think there's wonderful teachers out there. And there's some teachers that, hey, you know what, it's time for retirement. But what can be done to get this fixed sooner rather than never. I, I believe one of the things that can be done is to, these, these, these adults that are in these positions seriously consider the children. I don't think that they're considering the children in this when, when I look at certain things. Take yourself out. Mm -hmm. Would you want your child to learn some of the things that are being taught in the schools or your grandchildren or whomever to be taught some of the things are being taught in these schools. Uh, another thing is, 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 of course, school choice is a very, very important thing to me. I, I personally believe, like I said, that you should be able to choose where you want your child to go in these schools and consider the future of that child. Just because this child is in this certain neighborhood, that doesn't mean that their future is going to be that. Mm -hmm. And that that education that that child is receiving should be some of the best education that I mean, like, I get it. It does cost. That's why school choice should be a very, very important issue that we have on the table. Why take that away from a child? You know, you mentioned cost. One of the things that's very interesting is 
most private educations actually operate at about 70 to 80 percent of the cost of a public education. They're actually run more efficiently and more cheaply, but yet the test results of these kids has a much greater rate of performance in terms of achievement. And then one of the things that we hear a lot from the, from the public school sector is, hey, you're giving us the worst kids, you're giving us the broken homes, the broken families, and we're supposed to do something with these kids that, that may not be reachable, may not be, they, they may not be on the track for success. Do you believe that? Is that true? Or is, that, uh, is, it, is it because the public schools get the worst kids and the worst families? No. I, I, well, I believe it starts at home. We're, okay. not, we're not even going to talk. Let's take the school out for a second. Okay. It, 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 it starts at home. And a lot of it is, is because of the fathers being absent in the home. And why is that? Why, why, why are the fathers absent? I mean, do you have thoughts on that? I do. I, okay. I think that it's because they don't, it's, it has nothing to do with a systematic racism system. I, and I know I am going to get beat for saying that. <laughs> I know that. Okay. But what it has to do is personal responsibility. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you have a child, you should be in that child's life no matter what. It has nothing to do with the police. It has nothing to do with, you know, they're better than us. It's I got I I I laid down and I did this and this child needs me in his life or her life. And the father's being absent from the home is one of the biggest is not one it's the biggest issue Mm -hmm. right now among dark shaded people. It's the biggest issue. Mm-hmm. because it's just personal responsibility. That's all it is. So as an elected person to the state legislature, what can you do or what could the legislature do to support fathers being fathers? I believe, I believe if we had mentorship programs, different programs that allowed men to come in and let's learn how to be a man and be responsible. Let's learn how to, you know, okay, I don't have a job right now. What, what can I do to, to still take responsibility to take care of my child and not depend on the government to do this? Let's, 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 let's get some things in place where, you know, okay, not everybody has the perfect life. And I do, I realize I, I, uh, people do get sent to prison and all these different, I did prison ministry for 20 years. So oh, I've been wow. in a prison. That's min- a special thing. Yeah, I've done, I've, been, I've done prison ministry since 2001. Okay. I've been in every prison probably in the state of Ohio. And, you know, I've seen these different things. But it's, it goes back to being at the home and starting saying, okay, I have this child now. How am I going to begin to raise this child and show them responsible, me being responsible and taking responsibility for them coming into this, to this world because the child didn't ask to be here. Mm -hmm. They, they came because a result of a decision that you made. Mm -hmm. And so you have to take responsibility for that. And so if we begin to show them men that take those responsibilities and say, Hey, this is how we do it. Now is every father perfect absolutely not but if we begin to show them and have programs where it says hey you may not have a job now but let's teach you this trade maybe we can get you a job okay you know let's 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 put something in place where we have people who are you know doing certain things like like for me i I know about life insurance a little bit okay you know hey this may be a a avenue you want to take because a lot of people of the darker shade don't know about life insurance Mm mm-hmm you understand what I'm saying? And so those are different things that we begin to teach them and begin to show them that, hey, this is actually something that you need and something that will help you get to where you want to be. So, so you're referring to a different form of education that has a vocational element attached to it. There's a school here in Columbus that has off the charts results. It's called Cristo Ray. Are you familiar with them? My, my oldest son went there his freshman year. Okay, I think they have 100% college acceptance since they started, but they make kids, I can't say they make kids, but they, I, I, th- I know that's part of the curriculum is that 
the, the kids have to go into a professional employment situation for part of the day. Now, what's interesting about that is it's kind of an apprenticeship into life so that the kids are learning that, hey, successful people work at successful companies or have ideas and, and functioning capabilities where you show up on time, you, you learn to add value to a company, you, you, you build. You're part of a build of, of a better society, a better everything in that context. That's the highlights of it. I, I don't know what the negatives are to that. You know, I don't know if there's, you know, any, anything that even is negative of that. But is that a right pathway, do you think? I, be, I believe so. But to, to say what the negative part of that is, is that I, I guess I know exactly. Because, like, my son, when he went there, they put him at a bank. Okay. And they put him behind a desk for like six hours. Ooh, that's a while. That's not him. Okay. So we have to know, we have to play to their strengths. Mm -hmm. What's his strength? He works with his hands. Okay. He, he's good with his hands. He likes to do that. So we have to know, we have to figure out what they like to do. And then put them in a system where that would help them with that apprenticeship that you were saying about. Because for him to sit there well, four hours or whatever it was, I can't remember exactly, that, but he is like, Dad, I don't like this. That's not his thing. That wasn't his thing, right. Mm -hmm. he, like, he has to be moving. He has to be up, moving around, doing something, you know. But there is some people, there are some kids that do like the banking thing. So Makes put sense. them there. Yeah. But let's find out what their niche is and then put them in that area. Yeah, the vocational education piece, you know, I know that there's a statistic I recently saw that we could employ 100% of the people in America for 20 years in the building trades to rebuild our infrastructure, meaning 330 million people, if we could all be electricians, masons, carpenters, that we would be able to do full employment to rebuild this country. And that doesn't necessarily mean that this infrastructure bill that, that is out there is is worthy of what it is going to be passed for because it's not really an infrastructure bill a lot of people say but but it means that there is a place for everybody in America to earn a living raise a family a good living and be productive in our society which which is an important thing to think about absolutely for absolutely. sure so as you what, what, t tell us you know what other issues do you have out there? We talked a lot about education and development of people and minds. What about you know the economy? Is 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 Central Ohio doing the right thing in terms of the economy, or do you have any thoughts on that? As far as the economy goes, I know that we have to get people back to work. <laughs> okay, like that's one of the main things that I'm looking at, and I'm seeing. I see more hiring signs now than I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. Because I, get, I, I totally understand with the whole COVID shutdown, what happened. I get it. But to incentivize people to stay home now is not the way we should be going. We have got to get people back out working because you can't have money moves. Yep. Money has to move. It can't just stay stifled or it doesn't grow. Mm -hmm. That's with anything, you know. But as far as money, you have to be circulating the dollar. Yep. It can't just just stand still. And so when you're just giving people money to just stay home and just, you know, because of, you know, whatever the reason might be, I believe that we have got to get people back to these because now businesses are being shut down because they don't have enough employees. Okay. I mean, I was just literally at a restaurant two days ago and I couldn't sit where I wanted to sit because they were short staffed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like. We have got to get our people back out working again and saying, hey, you can make a living doing these different things and, you know, getting, getting it going again. So as far as Central Ohio goes, I, like I said, I see more hiring signs now than I see people at fast food restaurants making $15, $16 an hour, mm -hmm. you know, because they can't get people to work. Which, which means the price of everything's going up. Exactly. That's, that's simple economics right there. If I have to pay my employees more, then I have to pass it on to someone else by making either gas, milk, burgers, whatever it is it is that that, that product is, it goes up. You know? And then 
Now it's like, well, I don't make enough to buy this. Mm-hmm. Well, then how do we, how do we, you know, balance that? Yeah. You know, how do we balance that out for people, you know? And so it's just, Sean, we got to get people back out here. And because, I mean, it was thriving just a couple years ago. The economy was booming. Hmm. Unemployment was at one of its lowest rates it's ever been. Yeah. And, you know, people were happy. I'm not going to say they all were happy, but people were making money. Yeah. And they were, you know, being able to go on different trips, take your family on vacation and, and do these different things. But now... Is there, a, is there a part of the human being that that's important that they earn their money? Is there, is there a dignity that goes with that? Absolutely, there is. For me, at least, I'll, I'll say that. To be able to say that I earned something mean that I worked at it and that it's mine. Nobody can take that away from me. Mm-hmm. Nobody can take that process that I went through to get that money since we're talking about that. No one can take that away from me. So let me ask you this question because this is a big thing with me. It's the protection and development of the middle class in America. And I used to say development. I add the word protection now because I think that's crucial. Are we winning or losing at, at the middle class? Are they, are they safe? No, they're not. What needs to be done to keep them safer? I think there should be more opportunity for, I personally, I'm an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I think there should be more opportunity for entrepreneurship for, for, for people of the middle class, because like you say, that, that way of doing something and earning so that they feel like they have that sense of accomplishment Uh on, on different things, that sense of, I mean, I did this, I was able to build a business or you know, start a business and it grew from, you know, a small office to, you know, what it is to two, 300 employees, whatever it might be, you know, but entrepreneurship is huge to me too. Good, good. You grew up, you went to Northland High School, a North Side person. I'm an East Side guy. So I I grew up out, I grew up on the East Side. It's changed a lot. Yes. Significantly. There are some things out there that are just wonderful that have been there for years and years and years that you, you have to go back for. You know, I always say, hey, the, the, the pizza on the east side is really amazing. <laughs> the pizza on the north side, amazing. <laughs> but let's talk, about, let's talk about what's going on in terms of crime and punishment and justice. A lot of, there's a lot of friction, a lot of calls that, 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 that we're not fair, that, that you know, we, we, we are systemically against people not just people of color people of people of alternative lifestyle persuasions people who who think differently look differently or want to be different are we headed in the right direction or what what what, how, how do you how do you feel we need to be evolving so as i stated before i don't think that there's anything systemically racist about this country okay that's just that's my personal opinion now, there, have there been things that have happened that are completely wrong? Absolutely, and, I, and, I, and I'm not blind to see that. Just mm-hmm. for example, George Floyd. Uh-huh. No one deserved, he didn't not deserve to pass away that way. Yeah. Absolutely not. Derek Chauvin should be in prison just like he is. I, I'm, I'm 100% in agreement with that. But George Floyd is not a hero. That's okay. just my personal opinion. That's how I feel about it. And, but we are moving in this direction of everything has to be included and everything has to be accepted. And I don't believe that, that I have a biblical worldview. And so when, when, when I look at certain things that does not line up with what me personally, what the Bible says, then I say, well, no, wait a minute. What does, what does, God, see, God loves the person, but he may not love the act. Okay. And that's, the, that's how I separate it. Yeah. I love the person, but I don't love the act of what, hap- of what they're doing. Yeah. It's, it's like my, my children, my, my, my son. My son, you know, I have an eight-year-old, you know, I love him, but some of the things that he do, I don't like that. Yeah. And so that's how I'm able to separate those things. From okay. as far as, you know, tr- trying to accept certain lifestyles and saying that you can have gender neutral stuff and different things like that. That's how, that's how I look at that. Okay. 
Is there a place for, you're a, a religious man, clearly, is there a place for everyone to coexist together? Or does this, does this table need to be tilted to one direction or the other to re-strike a balance? And this is a deep thought. It's a deep question. It's one that I think a lot of people wrestle with presently. But, it's the simple, but to simplify the question, are we headed in the right direction or are we headed in a direction too quickly, perhaps? I think we're, I think we're heading in, in a direction way too quickly. Okay. To answer that, what you're saying. I think things are being pushed upon us that are not morally 50 years ago were acceptable. Okay. But it's not 50 years ago. It's today. You're right. But that, I'm, I'm just being the hypothetical it, guy here because these are, but, these but are the that, questions of the day. Right. It, it's today, but that, does, that doesn't make it right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Just because it's today doesn't make it right just because it's not 50 years ago. Okay. Just because you, you know, for, I, I, don't, I don't believe it's okay to have an abortion. That's my personal opinion. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Now, here it is. Here it is. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying, don't try to make me accept that. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, you, you can do what you want to do, but don't tell me that I have to agree with what you're doing. Okay. And I believe that's part of what's going on right now, that... I'm going to do this and you must agree with what I'm saying. Okay. And that's, that's the part that I don't like is that you're trying to make me agree with something that I don't agree with. Okay. I should probably go on with that subject just a little bit more. Okay. But I'm going to move a little bit. Okay. I, want to, I, want, I want to move back to the crime rate. And I want to talk back to justice in prisons Mm -hmm. and the fact that we have a murder spree going on in Columbus and not just a murder spree, a shooting spree Mm -hmm. in Columbus. And there are people that report to me that at 10 o'clock at night when they're dining in the short north that the waiters come and say, hurry up and finish your dessert, get out of here because you don't want to be here after such and such a time. What's going on? Well, let's talk about how they don't want the police involved in anything. Okay. Defunding the police is probably one of the worst ideas ever because they don't have a, a respect for authority anymore in the, in the streets. I'll say, but is authority, is authority been fair to them? Not all, not at all times. Okay. I'll, I'll put that not at all times, but I don't believe there's a system geared toward being unfair. That's okay. how I believe. I don't believe there's a system that says, you know what, because of this, we're going to curve it this way and make it look and make it be this. I, I, have, a lot of off, I have a lot of officers who are my friends. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they tell me that, you know, most of the time they're going to really be good with the person, but the person makes it worse okay. sometimes. And and I'm not saying vic- I'm not saying blaming the victim or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that sometimes these guys, they have a job that they've been sworn to do mm-hmm. and to protect and to serve the community. And they really want to do that. But if you make it an uncomfortable situation where they have to protect themselves, mm-hmm. then we have, to, we have to make it that situation. And so the crime is going up, I believe, because... We have a certain leadership who he's not backing his employees. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I'll just say it that way. He's okay. not backing his employees. Read between the lines, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not That's backing fine. those. Fine. He's not backing them. And so they're like, dude, you have our hands tied. And so most of the crime was being caught or whatever because just of simple traffic stops. Okay. But so now those have gone down because we don't want to look like we're just stopping someone just on the way that they look and different things like that. So now the crime is going up. And so, but that's what I'm saying. You don't want them there. You don't want the police there. But when something happens, who's the first people that you call? It's, it's, it's a tough question because, you know, there is more training, something that could help our police officers. They need more training. What, what do they do you think, I mean, you're running for state government, state mm-hmm. representative. Mm-hmm. 
you'll control the purse. Mm-hmm. You get elected. Mm-hmm. What do you? How do you spend? What, what do you spend that money on? Do you? As it relates to the police, you know, I, more training, less training, more equipment, less equipment, and then in general, where do you? I, how do you divvy up the pot? I do. I do believe that there's more training that needs to be done. I, I definitely agree on that. I do, and I believe that that these officers in the community need to come together and say, you know, how can we work together on this? Instead of listening to certain news stations trying to divide us. Okay. And let's, let's come together and let's really work on this. And let's really, so more training definitely for the officers on how to interact with the community, but then more training with the community on how to interact with the officers. Let me throw another piece into that. Because this is something I've picked up on, is you have the community, which is the people. Mm -hmm. You have the functions of government, the firefighters, the teachers, the police officers. And then in the middle of that, you have the government. Okay, And the government's its own thing. It's different than those subgroups. And it's different than the people in some respects. And there's a disconnect in the middle of the equation. Two plus two should equal four. But there seems to be a disconnect with that plus sign somehow, to me. Is that, is that the possibility? Is, and I think government is the plus sign. Is government not reacting properly to the bridge between those entities and the people? I, I, I absolutely agree with that, yes. Sometimes, sometimes, Sean, I believe government should do nothing. Mm. I, I, I believe okay. in some, they should do nothing. They, and they have that ability. I, I think sometimes they, they get involved in things that they really don't have to do anything about. Be, be, be absent. You don't have to be in everything. Yeah. You understand? what You don't have to be in everything. Well, that's a great point. That's a, that's a really amazing point because, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe things can take care of themselves. Exactly. In, in some respects. We're, we're with Ben James, fill in the blank podcast. Ben is a candidate for Ohio House of Representatives and is talking to us about his life experiences and his beliefs. So we're having a great conversation. Uh, Ben, with the district that you're going to be representing, provided you win, what are the particular issues that district has right now that you can help affect? I believe that our schools are, our schools are very, you know, very important and, and our community coming together and rallying around our schools to help. I mean, it goes back to the education piece. Once again, Sean, we've been talking about our kids and grandkids having a better world than what we see right now. And I believe coming into our schools as a community and as a, as, as, as a people saying, let's rally around the kids, forget Mm -hmm. how we believe. What, what do we want these kids to have as a better world? We can't hand this world over to them that we're in right now. Well, there's a lot of people that have a version of the world that they are handing over and that they're, we're trying to do it through teaching their minds to think certain ways and different things. Some people say for the better, some people say for the worse. Seems to be a big divide there. Any thoughts on are we heading in the right direction with, you know, with, with the new versions of history, the new forms of common core math versus old math, the new, you know, English standards for communicating thoughts and ideas versus having politically or not politically correct, but but grammatically correct spelling, grammatically correct sentence structures, things of that sort. Isn't that an easier, more gentle way of the future? No, you're talking about the Common Core math. I have an eight-year-old. I've been helping him with his math, and I'm completely lost. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, what is this? I don't remember this in third grade. He's in third grade, and I'm going, why don't they just teach it this way? Like, the, it, to me, it's more simple the way that I learned it. Okay. It's just a more simple way yeah. of, like you said, two plus two is four. But now he's having to do things, and I'm like, I have no clue what this is. And so to answer that question, Sean, I think that we're – to me, it looks like we're making things more complicated. Mm-hmm. We're complicating more things. And when we could just simplify it more and just make sure that the, we learn our, our core, our core, you know, they're not even teaching. Well, he's learning now cursive. Okay. For a while, they weren't even teaching cursive. Yeah. But he's learning it now. And he, he was so excited about that. Hmm. 
He brought it home the other day, Dad, I can write in cursive. And he was showing me his paper where he was writing in cursive. And, and just I just think that we're trying to make things more complicated when they don't have to be. Yeah. They don't have to be more complicated. Let's just keep it. Two plus two is four, like you said. I never did very well in cursive, but uh, <laughs> that's that was second grade for me. <laughs> um, okay, fun question. Yes, sir. You said you're a drummer. Yes, sir. Who's your favorite drummer? Who's the best drummer of all time? Well, a guy that I really like is a guy named Eric Moore. Eric Moore. Eric Moore. I, I follow him on YouTube. Okay. And, you know, and I learned a lot from but if we really want to go back to when I was when I started out, I listened to Phil Collins. Phil Collins. Yes, I did. Sue Su Studio. Yes, listen I to did. you. Yes, I did. I listened to <laughs> I listened to Phil Collins and I and when I text you, when I tell you I practiced in the air tonight over and over and over and over and over and over again. Super. Yes. Well, we'll have to hear that sometime. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. And we're going to wrap up. So last stuff that we didn't talk about that you want to tell us about. Tell us about it, and then we'll move on. As far as what? I'm sorry. Anything, I, anything we might have missed. I think we got a good sampling of who you are. You're a, you're, a, you're a son, a child of Columbus. You've seen everything happen here. You've watched the development of the community. You're a man of faith, clearly. Grounded in, grounded in that direction, you seem to want change in a positive way, I believe. How can we follow you? How can our listeners stay in touch with the Ben James future? Okay. And well, I am on how can they help you? I'm sorry. I am on Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube. Now, I just started a YouTube channel last week and Facebook. You just look me up. Ben James is my name. Very simple. B-E-N-J-A-M-E-S. Just talk to me. If you see me out and you, you recognize me, just let's have a conversation. Let's talk about these things. Let's, let's build this together. I, I'm not trying to divide and separate anything. I just want to make sure that we're able to build this together and understand each other and where we're going and wanting to make a difference and give our children something that we may or may not have had you know and give them something better even better than what we have and that's that's what's very important to me and i i just thank you for the opportunity to do this sean and just you know getting 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 my voice heard out there and you know it's just it's just a matter of doing it together with with the people yeah good stuff ben james has been our guest for this session Ben is running for the Ohio House of Representatives. If you see Ben, he's a great guy, lovable, happy, giant smile, but wants to get things done. You've been listening to Fill in the Blank. Please like us, please subscribe to us, and please share us with your friends. Hey, thanks for giving us your time to listen. You've been listening to Fill in the Blank with Sean Parker, where we talk about the issues of politics and the geopolitical marketplace, as well as economics. If you like our channel, please subscribe to us at Fill in the Blank on YouTube and be sure to listen every week as we come back to you with some of the most thought provoking people of the day. And learning is always the key to what we're trying to do.